What is happening all you peaceful warriors out there, Ran J Bro back at it again and today we're going to be taking a first look slash unboxing even though it's already out of the box of the Geisley URGI, this is their 14.5 near clone upper receiver, let's get into it. All right guys, welcome back to the channel. Before we get into the unboxing slash initial impressions review of the URGI Upper, I just wanna say thank you so much for stopping by the channel. If it's your first time here, please like, comment, and subscribe. If you guys enjoy these videos, it means a lot to me. Also, biggest support of the channel right now is Brownells. If you guys wanna help the channel out monetarily, if you're blessed enough to do so, head on over to brownells.com, use bro code RDB10, which is 10% off any order of $150 or more, and it gives the channel a little bit of kickback so I can fund the ammunition and all the other things, the camera equipment that goes into making these videos. So with that being said, let's get into the review. All right guys, so let's start off with our full disclosures. What is my relationship with Geisley? Geisley did give me a small discount code to purchase this upper receiver, but I did spend a lot of money on this. Uh, upper receiver group and it is quickly becoming my absolute favorite AR-15 to shoot for many reasons which, which we'll get into here in a second but full disclosure I did buy this upper receiver with my own money although it was slightly discounted I'm pretty sure you can get the same upper receiver on Brownells right now either with my discount code or with their current discount code they're running the build 15 discount code for about what I paid for it so not a huge discount but we just want to get that out of the way so you guys know where I stand as always I'm going to give an unbiased review Geisley themselves as a company could give a shit less about my YouTube channel so I'm not making or breaking their company these are they have NSN numbers on them which means that they're selling these to the United States military they have a contract for these these are essentially the block three uppers that's replacing the Daniel Defense block two upper receiver groups with the RIS two handguards and this is kind of what the military is moving to, regardless of what SIG tells you. So, all right guys, so this isn't truly an unboxing video, but I'm just gonna tell you what this thing came with because the box is downstairs, I don't feel like going to get it. And there wasn't that much, I could just explain to you real quick what came in the box. So, it obviously comes with the upper receiver group. It comes as well with the bolt carrier group. That's their Geisley Enhanced uh, Reliability BCG. So the company that makes the carpenter steel for all the bolts that are pretty much used in the United States is, is very close to Geisley. As far as I understand from watching the Geisley videos with Bill Geisley himself, they talk about having engineered a new type of steel that is even better than the regular Carpenter 158 steel that is used on all these AR-15 bolt heads. So take that for what it's worth for all you metal heads, all you engineers out there, you, that's way above my pay grade. A regular DD or uh, you know any BCG out there, BCM does the trick for me. I've never had an issue with those, but allegedly this thing is rated for even more rounds than those BCGs of the past with the Carpenter 158. This is like an enhanced Carpenter steel, so that's pretty cool. And then it also, most importantly, in my opinion, along with the gassing system, comes with their Geisley braided wire buffer spring and their and their Geisley buffer weight. Let's talk about that because the most impressive thing about this rifle in this upper receiver, it's just sitting on, for all you guys who are wondering, it's just sitting on a standard Daniel Defense lower receiver. It's nothing special, it's not clone correct, but it's clone-ish enough for me. But with that being said, there's nothing special with the lower, it has a Geisley trigger in it, but this thing is one of the yep. most flat shooting and well-balanced rifles that I own. So much in fact that I don't wanna shoot any of my other rifles now that I've shot this thing. I've shot a total of about 350 rounds on this rifle right here. 200 of that was under night vision. Obviously you can see the EOTech, which is in the Unity Riser, which in my opinion is the best setup for passive aiming with night vision. But overall, this thing shoots incredibly flat, incredibly smooth. The recoil impulse is straight back. It is predictable. It is one of the easiest guns to shoot, uh, get quick follow-up shots on target. And it is super lightweight as well, just with the Mark 16 rail. And everything about this upper receiver screams quality. So if my friends or my family are watching and you wanna know what one rifle or what one upper you should get right now that's my favorite, it's 100% this 14.5 from Geisley Automatics. Now, the one downside that some of you may see if you already have invested heavily in other suppressor manufacturers and you don't have any Surefire cans, these do come pin and welded with a Surefire muzzle device. However, this is pretty much the same as a Super Duty upper uh, without the color coordination and the NSN numbers on here um, as their regular Super Duty uppers. Full disclosure, I've never shot their Super Duty upper, uppers, but I'm pretty sure it's the same exact thing. This is a Geisley barrel. This is not a clone correct Block 3 or URGI upper receiver with a Daniel Defense barrel. It's a Geisley barrel. And this is what is available on their website and on Brownell's website as well currently. But the one downside that you non-cloners might see about this upper receiver is that it's pin and welded with a Surefire muzzle device. Now, this is their four prong. This is kind of an older, outdated, the three prong is kind of the newer generation of the of the flash hiders from Surefire. Some guys love them, some guys hate them. The one thing I will say is that if you can hear this, 
the ping, um, the, the ringing of the shot, when you pull a shot, that ringing persists. It does happen. Um, I heard about it, I heard about it all the time. I thought people were over-exaggerating. It is slightly annoying, especially when we're in Ear Pro, it seems a little bit louder. Surefire does have this proprietary uh, mounting system that doesn't accept like Bravo compatible. You know, there's no way for you to take a Sandman S and put it on this gun unless you chop the barrel and do all that stuff. So just one thing to keep in mind. In my normal ADHD fashion, I skipped ahead of the unboxing. I kind of talked about it slightly, but let's just recap what comes in it. The upper receiver with the pin and welded flash hider, the BCG, the braided buffer wire spring and weight, and then it also comes with a pretty sick patch, which I'll roll in a photo of right here, of the URGI. So that's all that came in the box, and that's all you really need. Just slap it on a lower receiver, slap your optic on there, and go to work. So before we talk about the setup, I just wanna talk about what it's like to shoot, why is it better than any other upper receiver that I'm running currently, and kind of my initial thoughts and impressions on it. So I don't have thousands of rounds on this thing yet, but as I mentioned, it is so lightweight, it is so light recoiling. It seems like a tuned rifle, the way it came, slapped it on a mil spec lower, and it feels like a competition tuned rifle. That's how easy it is to shoot. Uh, you guys, I'll roll in some footage of me shooting at the range with some build drills. And uh, with this Geisley Super Dynamic three gun trigger in here, I'm absolutely able to rip this thing faster than any other rifle that I own. And it just feels right. I mean, I have big hands, so big quad rails have always been kind of my favorite thing, but this rail, as thin as it is, um, I, do, I am running a Samson Manufacturing uh, vertical foregrip here. Uh, which is really fucking sweet, but just, this whole setup just feels so right, and it feels so good, and it shoots so good that I don't want to shoot any of my other rifles. So, in the past, I've always gone for the most durable, the most duty-rated kind of firearm that I could find, and so I buy milled receiver AKs, I bought HK MR556 setups, uh, six Spear LT, uh, which I haven't even shot yet, but I kind of go for what is going to perform if she never hit the fan, and I didn't have the ability to clean this thing all the time in the field, what, what's going to run, and... I never looked at these skinny um, rails as kind of the most durable, but this thing with the Geisley lockup that you have right here, their barrel nut is super long, so you get a lot of uh, you get a lot of contact on this on this um, handguard here. And you can also see it has these two little ears on the side, which is a, prevents it from rotating as well as down here on the bottom. So this thing is not rotating at all. You can guarantee this thing is going to hold zero if you have any kind of IR laser aiming device, anything of that sort. And so I'm really setting this thing up to be my do it all rifle and my go-to. This is currently my nightstand gun, but it's gonna turn into my night vision gun and kind of my everything gun because it is just that much fun to shoot. So I haven't performed an accuracy test yet, but this is a cold hammer forge, chrome line barrel. I have no doubt that Geisley is gonna perform as far as the accuracy goes. I think on their website they state this is a sub MOA gun with good ammo and a good shooter, but that is uh, to be determined as far as my experience with that. As far as Aesthetics, I mean the rail, they can't guarantee what the anodizing is going to look like. It's just the nature of anodizing. So mine's a little bit more of that gold look, kind of matches the Unity there. If you guys have a Unity tan riser, a little more of a gaudy gold, but it looks good on here. Yeah, let's just throw the Surefire can on here and talk about that a little bit. So obviously being that it is a Surefire muzzle device pin and welded, I have my Surefire RC2 right here. I'm going to throw this thing on and just take a look at how beautiful this thing looks with it on here. The flat dark earth on the Surefire doesn't really match the tanidizing on the Geisley reel, but it still is a whole vibe. Does it add up quite a bit of weight to the front of the gun? Yes, but it's still manageable because the rifle is so light to begin with that it is still super wieldable. Does add a little bit of length. I think overall, you know, you're probably looking at like what a 20 inch barrel would be with the suppressor and the 14.5, maybe like an 18 or 19 inch barrel, but it's uh, still super manageable if you're running this indoors. You can obviously do that, all that cool guy stuff. Putting the can on here, it did change the ejection pattern. So without the can, this thing was ejecting perfectly at the three to four o'clock position. Perfect ejection pattern every single time. And it's very consistent. Uh, didn't expect anything less out of Geisley, but this is the first like Geisley upper slash complete setup that I've ever owned. And it is just, it's just the chef's kiss as far as how it runs like a sewing machine. Throwing the can on there obviously did add uh, quite a bit of gas pressure to it, but it still was ejecting around the two o'clock region. And as you guys can tell in the footage, it did speed up the BCG speed a little bit, the cycle speed, but I'm not running a machine gun, so I can't really test that out back to back to show you guys that. Maybe one day we'll have some machine guns on the channel and we could uh, really test that. But so what else can I say about this thing? This thing quickly became my favorite rifle. Um, like the second I started shooting it, it's just, it's just a performer. There's really no bells and whistles to it. It's just a really good, well-made quality product. There's nothing about it that I can really knock. It's so much lighter than my Block 2 upper receivers or any of the, you know, Aero Precision. I love Aero Precision, but 
Um, it's so much lighter than a lot of the guns I run, especially the HKs and the short stroke gas piston systems and all that good stuff. But as far as the DI system goes, I don't think it gets much more reliable or better than this thing. And obviously the military has done a ton of testing uh, before they bought any of these and, and gave them the contract. So you know it's been through those tests. I just gotta say, from my own experience, first impressions, I freaking love this upper receiver for what you get. You just build your own lower. You don't need anything special. Just put a good trigger in it and slap this upper on there and you're gonna have a go to war rifle. I bet everybody in Israel or in Ukraine wishes they had one of these right now, but that is the nature of the world and that's why America is the greatest country on the planet. Let's keep it that way. So with all that being said, guys, final thoughts. Absolutely recommend this thing. I have no skin in the game. I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with this upper receiver, this URGI. I do have a attacker one to eight coming for this thing pretty soon from brownells.com. So big shout out to brownells. Go head on over to brownells.com. Use bro code RDB10 to support the channel. Appreciate you guys. But with that being said, this is going to be 100% my go-to war battle rifle as well as my nightstand gun and my night vision gun. This is just taking the, the cake on all those different, for all those different tasks for me because it is such a well-balanced rifle. To be determined for long-term review, for reliability, for, for accuracy as well, we'll determine all that in the future because I just haven't had it long enough to do all that with it yet. But once we get the attacker 1-8 to eight on here, we'll take it out to range. We'll see what kind of distance we can get and what kind of accuracy we can get. As well as some more night vision footage once I find a range that I can consistently go train uh, with night vision. I'm planning on using this in all my upcoming courses whether it be a carbine, if I'm gonna do any three gun, this is gonna be the gun that I'm gonna use. With all that being said, if you already have an AR-15, if you already have a setup similar to this, do you need to sell that and buy this? No, you do not. As always, guys, it's gonna be a lot more about you as a shooter than it is about the rifle itself. And don't be like me, don't be a collector. Train with your weapons, make sure you know your dope, your holdovers, buy the same ammo, be consistent in all the ammo you're, you're using. And you know, make sure you have a sling, make sure you have body armor. You don't need to go buy this upper receiver just because it looks cool. I mean, if you have the money, go ahead. It's fucking awesome. You're not going to regret it. But choosing between this upper receiver and a training class or ammo to train or body armor, I recommend getting the other stuff first and then this thing can wait. But if you're really in love with it and you must have it, then sell something and pick this thing up. So one piece of advice before I let you guys go, have those difficult conversations with the anti-gun people in your life. With everything that's going on in the world right now, this is probably the best time to bring them on board to protecting the Second Amendment and talking to them about freedom and why it's so important that we maintain the right to bear arms as the Constitution, the supreme law of the land states, because this is the only country in the world where you're truly a free man as much as it's gone to shit in the past couple years, it's still the greatest country in the world because of the Second Amendment and because of freedom lovers like yourself. So make sure you have those tough conversations. Don't burn bridges. Be calm, cool, collected. That's what they expect you to do is kind of lose your cool because this is something that I'm super passionate about. So I'm going to take my own advice next time I'm in a conversation with my friends or family about the Second Amendment. But a lot of them have come around because of recent events. People are starting to realize how important it is that to have the ability to defend yourself because the government's not gonna be there to protect you. And a lot of the times they're gonna be the ones that are putting their foot in your throat. So make sure you're trained with these weapons, make sure you have the body armor, the night vision, the suppressors, all the stuff the government's supposed to have, including full auto. I'm looking at you, NFA, ACF, because that is protected by the constitution. All of those things are important to have as citizens because as citizens of the United States, we are the greatest fighting force the world's ever seen and we need to keep it that way. Thank you so much for staying to the end of the video, guys. If you want to support the channel, please like, comment, or subscribe. Those are free ways to do it. If you have some cash and you want to spend it, head on over to brownells.com. Use bro code RDB10. Gives me a little kickback, saves you a little bit of money, and hopefully you can get a pretty sick setup like this. That's going to be it for today, guys. Until next time, stay safe, stay dangerous. Range Day Bro, out.